Hello and welcome to uh, Transmutational Thursday. This is uh, live, inspirational, common unity collaboration, hashtag lit. Yes, uh, my name is Mark Avadi. It is a pleasure to be here and to host continual uh, streams of divine consciousness coming through different aspects of ourselves. That's all really we are doing here is providing reflections to other aspects of ourselves. Um, so today is no difference, except my technology is behaving a little funny. Thank you. Uh, today we have Teresa Livingstone, and she's going to be sharing on, on loving to be of service. Uh, Teresa is an Australian-born actress and uh, can dance backwards in heels and still crack a stock whip like a true Aussie Jillaroo. Jillaroo. Jillaroo, I got it. Jackaroo, Jillaroo, right. She's a successful equestrian, a horse trainer, a professional dancer. She's an uh, awarded TV host, podcaster, leather maker, jeweler, designer, yoga teacher, lifestyle coach, life coach. Um, her life is rich with experience. These days, Teresa is focused on social evolution, uh, hosting an intimate talk show called The Extraordinaries. Aries, yes. She speaks with changemakers, uh, BLM activists, and uh, protesters fighting for social justice. Together with her partner, Will, she's been extending their services and love to young people struggling with their identity, sexuality, and empowerment. Uh, together, they join a white people. They joined a white people for Black Lives, so that they can learn how to eradicate any white supremacy in their lives and the lives of those around them. You can find out more on the uh, links below. So, without further ado, let us go to uh, Teresa. Teresa. Hi. And welcome to the show. Good morning. How are you? I am very well, as I said, except Good. for this slowness of technology. I'm happy to be speaking with you. That's the important bit. It's the price of being in Hawaii, isn't it? Paradise. You can't have everything, Mark. Right, exactly. But I, I, I thought I could. That was the whole point. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> so nice. um, tell us about what, what's going on. I mean, you've, you've, you've obviously come, you know, you've got a lot going on in your world. It seems we all do at the moment, right? Right, right. So much. I, uh, I was thinking when you said, you know, when you invited me on the show, you know, what is alive for you right now? And, and what do you want to talk about? And, you know, what seems to be coming so to the front is that I'm, although I'm so passionate and enjoy and get so much fulfillment and satisfaction being of service, uh, I think as soon as you speak that out loud and you hold it in your heart, like you are flooded, I have been finding, with so much um, request to uh, be a space holder. Mm -hmm. Lots of phone calls and, I mean, even this morning I've been, you know, in tears, like just calls out of the blue, which I'm, I'm so honoured to be that person for these people. But friends and people I don't even know, people on social media who have said, if you need a shoulder, and it's, um, it's kind of just taken off. Like I'm, I, I feel very um, needed to be support. And uh, it's been really inspiring to uh, have been trusted by so many people, you know, to, to be an ear, to be a shoulder, to be some kind of, you know, space holder for what they're going through. I mean, I don't know if you're feeling this too, but uh, there's a lot of pain and suffering and, uh, and real drama going on right now. It's yeah. tough for a lot, of, a lot of people. What, what is it you think that, 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 makes a good space holder like what what are we talking about here huh uh i'm still figuring that out <laughs> uh trying to get as good at that as i can um i, I always thought that i needed uh you know uh, education and a certification and you know my official stamp that says you can trust me i know what i'm doing right um but i i, I feel like it's just a a heart a heart that can can hit, can listen empathically, and uh, you know, I I feel like as soon as I hear someone's story, like the the pain and the feeling of the pain is very um, 
very, I'm very aware to it. I go, oh, oh and where that lives. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if that's helpful, but I just, I, I love, I love to help people. I love to, you know, help them talk through their problems. I love conversation. I love communication. I like, you know, I'm not necessarily going to be um, all soft and fluffy. I'm a bit tough, you know. Like a good I don't know. Of the uh, Jillaroo. Exactly right. I don't know who wrote that. <laughs> I was like, oh, probably me when I was trying to pretend how amazing I was. Um, but yeah, I, I can dance backwards in heels and I do crack a stock whip. Um, can you do them at yeah. the same time? Uh, <laughs> I never tried it. But uh, after this call, maybe I'll give it a shot. And then I know that I can speak truth about that. <laughs> so what, what are you finding the main thing going on? Um, like, what are your, your main insights that you've, that you've gathered from this uh, time? They have been so wide ranging. Like everything from my friend's dog dying this morning, you know, and other issues that I actually can't speak out loud. I had a call last night with a, a bombshell that had just been dropped on someone and maybe they're listening. Um, I love you. It's going to be all right. Uh, and, and then, you know, my, you know, my black girlfriends who are, you know, LA natives and this talk about trying to understand, I'm, I'm Australian you know, we've got our own indigenous shame, you mm. know, that's been going on for us, but, you know, trying to understand the, the difficulty of what it's been like, you know, for 400 years, you know, in this country to be African American. Like I, I'm just scratching the surface of the depth now with the help of my friends whom I love and adore. And we never talked about that stuff before. You know, we were just like, hi, how are you? I'm Teresa. You're awesome. Let's be friends. Mm -hmm. You know, and now since all this has happened, because we were, we're in a place where the riots were like on our door, we slept with a crowbar because they were rattling around our house and, you know, breaking in and setting fires on the corner. So we kind of landed ourselves in the middle of this bleep show. I don't know if I can swear. I'm Australian. It's kind of, yeah. <laughs> it's part of our vernacular. No way to I'm saying I can't fucking swear. I see you're, you're English, you know, you can't actually get through a conversation without right. swearing. It's right. adjectival. <laughs> How we how we uh, sure we've got emotions at all, you know? Oh, totally. What else would there be? I haven't got a highlighter while I'm talking. It's a shit show. It's been a shit show right on our corner. Um, so it's really brought up a lot of stuff, and uh, I'm grateful for it. You know, it's thrown us, uh, you know, willingly so, heart first into you know understanding what 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 all of our roles are. Mm. And what all of our histories have been and what all of the blind spots are that we have, right. you know, I'm love. I just want love. I want to be able to wrap my arms around the world and go, let's just stop all the shit. Um, but you can't do that, obviously, but I, I'd like to know how. Yeah. You know, there's this interesting uh, uh, dance because from, from as long as I can remember this notion of, um, you know, how much action is met with the oppression? Like, how do we, how do we dance with it? And, and how much are we responsible for people who um, are not racist? How do we, you know, how do we engage in um, resolving the unconscious parts of our, of our um, systemic racism that's in the culture? Yes. What have you, have you been shocked by what you've kind of found about, your own uh, uh, unconscious belief systems. I mean, you can only speak about what you know, what I know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I even see it, and I have done all my life, in, you know, conversations that I have with, with my family. And I come from the most loving, the most generous, the most kind um, pair of humans and and people and I'm, it makes my heart burst thinking about how good they are mm. but even in that exists we're Australian talking about Australian even in that exists a a, a base truth of unseen racist comments that are just 
like throwing shit, the word shit into a conversation. Like it's just how we behave. It's just how, you know, we're taught from the time we were kids. Don't trust that person. That's the truth of this. And those things necessarily are not the truth. They're in fact the opposite of true, but we don't know unless we can flip it perspective wise and have a look and go, Oh, that's me. Mm. I'm repeating that. And there's the, you don't know what you don't know in true landmark form. Right. And uh, it's really lovely to, to look. And on, on that, I think it's just conversation. You know, we can all, I said to someone the other day, like, you know, we've got, you know, left and right and, you know, red and blue here in this country. And there's, you know, the tension that's going on around that. You know, there's even families, daughters and parents, you know, runs Republican, the daughter's Democratic. And how do you, how do you have those conversations when there's so much stubbornness? Um, but, you know, the age old thing that, that wars come from, just your opinion and the fact that you believe in this God and you believe in this one doesn't mean I have to kill you. Right. I want to hear what you have to say and hear your passion about it and go, ha, I believe that that is so true for you. How fascinating. Right. Right. And therefore what's true for me could potentially be fascinating for you. Let's talk about that. That's a fireside wonder, but we just get so caught up in being told we're wrong and so much empowerment by telling someone else they're wrong it's it's a strange human thing to me i don't know yeah that's very interesting that notion that that, that people get empowerment by um what i mean what's really going on there when 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 people are are saying you're wrong that belief's wrong and they argue it there is mm. a power trip there yeah don't you think it lives somewhere? I don't know. Not a clue. <laughs> you know, not studied anthropology or anything, but it's got to be some kind of survival thing, right? You know, we went, some of us went up into the hills, some of us stayed down here, some of us had fire, some of us didn't. It's like mm. being a part of a, a team is hopefully, you know, the, the squad that moves forward. Right. We're never really safe to just go, I'm going to go over into the forest by myself because you don't survive yeah it's yeah no absolutely i mean there's there's a, a thing in psychology it's a minimum group paradigm which <laughs> yeah. is basically when, like that yeah when you put people in just basic groups you're not even they don't even know who's in the group you're not given it a name or anything you just labeled it a and b uh people yeah. discriminate negatively against the out group and positively against the in group yes um so there is definitely this a you know historic uh, anthropological thing where we've, we've I mean even your sporting events in England you will right. kill each other because you're lost so so is that something that we need to you know look at do we need to end sporting events no no life is sport isn't it we're still in the game play on um, play on. but I I think it's fascinating um I, I sort of it seems to be no matter how far we grow and how much progress we make that that primal need to do that you know still exists i don't know i don't know if it's ever going to change but it seems to be one of the things that keeps us small mm. so i mean me. what 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 are you finding that some of the things that that reflections are helping people realize i mean what what is the, you know, is it the fact that we're all one group? I mean, is that what we're going for now? Is that, you know, there is no separation between, I mean, there are these people who, who've, who've said things like, I don't see color. Now, mm. that's kind of, I mean, what, what, do uh, you, what do you say to something like that? Uh, it's interesting you said that <clears throat> because uh, Extraordinaires is the name of the podcast. And uh, I interviewed a dear friend of mine, uh, my African-American girlfriend born in Los Angeles, really heartbroken and torn and in her words has lost hope. And um, <clears throat> we, were, we were talking about that. Oh God, I just went off on a whole tangent in my brain. Um, and we, and I, I wrote down separation. <laughs> mm. uh, and then what was the thing that you said that was the second topic? What do we think about what, sorry? Um, well, you know, people who say I don't see color. Color, thank you. Um, I had that exact conversation 
And when I was a, a kid, um, I don't think that I did. Um, I mean, of course you do, but it has no effect. It has no, I didn't really recognize it as going different. It was just like wonder, like looking at a flower for the first time that's bright orange and going, wow, you know? And uh, I didn't mean to offend anyone by saying I didn't see color, but when I was a, a child and was so pure, that never occurred to me. Of course, now it's fair to say, I see you. I do not intend to take any of who you are away from you. I do see you. I see you as beautiful. And at, at, at no point does the fact that your skin is black have anything reflect on me to say, oh, we're different. Other than I need to understand in this country that I have to figure out there's certain words and terminologies that are misconstrued as they're not in Australia. Right. It's exactly. a, it's a, it's a serious thing here. You've got to be so careful. Yeah. Yeah. I, have, I have absolutely noticed that, uh, being, yeah. being British. Yeah. We, we, we don't seem to do in, in Britain, we don't seem to do racism in the same way. I think we're more focused on class classism yeah. um, yep. on, on how much money you've got and how educated you are. You know, I think that's the real, uh, thing there but but you're, you're saying your your black friend that you were speaking to in LA she's feeling particularly uh low at this time like she's not feeling inspired by by everyone coming together and and um seeing no. the truth of what's going on and that was a surprise to me too because in my naivety I was like has this same kind of Force never been seen since like MLK walked those freedom fighters across the bridge in Selma. Like it didn't seem like there'd been so much international or, you know, people like me of every color getting behind the, right. the movement. And she was like, what we'd been here before and nothing changed. It's, it, it, I mean, it's funny that, I mean, it's so funny. It's strange that, she, that, that that's the sense that you got from there. I mean, I, I think we, we're at a crux point we've never been before, mainly because we've got the internet. Um, and, you know, yeah, never before yeah. have we, have, can we spread um, things so quickly, spread realizations yeah. so quickly. And, yeah. um, and that's what excites me about this, is that we, we, we can share this sort of, the outrage um, without yeah. having to necessarily um, all be in the f same physical location. Yeah. So w w what do you think are some of the things that need to happen for, for us to sort of evolve here? Well, I don't want us to stop. I think that's what's happened in the past. It seems so overwhelming. That's why people don't vote, right? You're just like, what's my vote? What's my thought? What's my effort going to do to change? that right and i just think i can't get over this overwhelming feeling that you and me and everyone who's not government are the masses we are the overwhelming majority and you know mostly mind you i'm australian and california so many people think the same way you know that i do that we do yeah um and I, uh, so it feels very, you know, powerful and positive here. Um, but that's where I think those conversations come in handy. Like talking to every single person, even on the street, take a moment to endear yourself. Someone said this beautiful word. Uh, I think it was a shake. Um, forgive me if that's incorrect. Um, but I, I, he was definitely wearing some beautiful headdress and he was speaking and he said, endear yourself to someone who doesn't look like you. Right. I thought that was beautiful. And I, I just think we can't stop doing that. And you can't stop internet, educating yourself. Google is free. Right. You know, how, how do you learn about what white, white supremacy, you know, means? It's not just, a, it's not just, it's not just about a, a black issue. White supremacy keeps all of us down. Just the color of my skin doesn't, it doesn't appear to be a, a, an additional negative. You know, we're all, none of us are free in this point. We're all being many more than most agreed. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But we're, we're, we're all, we're all, we're all in trouble. We're not, we're, we're not treated. We're not treated as we should be. There's possibilities. We're all kept. being oppressed in, 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 in a, in a sort of a universal, like a financial way. 
to it's disgusting it. it's disgusting lack of freedom so what what are the what are the solutions here what are the what are the options well to I, that's the thing like i don't enjoy politics sadly i wish i did more but you know you make, you make a great president First uh, Aussie, uh, first female. <laughs> I, I think a, a female woman of colour should be president next, honestly. I think that would be the best thing. Yeah. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. How are you, I mean, what, what are you thinking on the politics front? Like, the, there was a part of me, you know, when, when Trump got elected, I was actually pleased. I was happy uh, in the sense that... Way. So in the sense that... I didn't, I believed Hillary is evil and, uh, uh -huh. and, and hidden, evil and hidden. Yes. And, and, yes. and I believe that Trump would so outrage people that he would stimulate people to rise up. And, and I, from what I see, that is exactly what's happened. Um, there's, been, there's been a rise up, not only of the more women and, and people of color in Congress and, and in the government now than there ever was. I mean, mm. look, we've got AOC out of this. You know? Yeah, uh, we got AOC out of this. I, what, what, what better, what better exchange? Um, uh, and now the I question like is, what is going to happen from from now on here um, with with Trump and and Biden? I mean, does anyone really? Anyone Those are our choices. That piece of wallpaper. Oh, why is it just that we have to suck up those two choices? Right. What the fuck is that about? Oh, that's it. You can only have shit old rancid milk or you can have toilet water. Toilet what do you water? prefer to drink? <laughs> <laughs> that is a great, that is a great double. I'm quite that. Uh, oh, water I don't want drink. to drink either of those, please. <laughs> I'd like champagne. Um, I don't. So, I mean, you know, I, it seems like the power structures are, are, are keeping us down. We have to put people in a place of leadership that give a shit. They have to be people who are willing to stand up for equality and shake some trees. And there's not many of them out there and you can be damn certain they're going to stop them as soon as they get reach that glass ceiling, you know, from down the top, you know, I won't let go. Just like click some fingers off the edge and bye, sink into the abyss. But if we are supportive of these people, you know, surely we have a better chance, but they don't get a chance. That's that white suppression thing, that white supremacy, right? They're just, no one wants to mess with ALEC and all those companies and all that government that get their power and their side deals and their this, that, and the other, where we are blinded. Let's, let, we are kept blind. Let, let's come out of the macro and come, come to the micro. Mm. What? What, I mean, you know, your, your, your topic was being of loving service. Mm. What, what is it that we can do um, inside ourselves to promote and help change go on? Like, does it make a difference? Um, you know, what's I going think it's on? it's the only difference. I honestly think it's the only difference. As I said, I don't know. All I know is what I feel. And I know that you know, I teach yoga, I meditate a lot. And the world that is within each individual is boundless. And the perspective, oh, the <clears throat> level of compassion and empathy and understanding and truth that you can turn onto yourself and you know we all know you cannot hide from that little tiny voice that says why did you just say that what did you get out of doing that what what slight power trip was that to make yourself feel better or to hide or reapply that band-aid to that pain that you haven't looked at for the past 20 years like i just think that our, our internal world creates the reality of the external world and us going, it's your fault. It's your fault. You're to blame. You're shit. You're a liar. You're this, you're that is exactly the problem. Mm -hmm. When you can look at yourself and go, Oh really? 
is that their problem is it is it their fault is it as soon as you solve that you, it, it 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 vanishes mm. the blame and the accusation will vanish you don't have a leg to stand on because your inauthenticity and your lie that you've been telling yourself is the fucking problem <laughs> mm. i think that's what i've been looking at anyway all those little shadowy places within me but they're to be shared that vulnerability and that truth changes the world around you when you speak that even though it might be horrific if, if, if it is white supremacy if it is inequality if it is a shame if it is a guilt if it is a, a harboring of an accusation if you speak that out loud there's not a person who wouldn't go huh okay let's what how, what's that you know let's let's look at that that's beautiful the vulnerability is beautiful and, and, and you think that there's an extra power in, in, in vocalizing this? What, what happens there? Definitely. Am I talking too much? <laughs> no, no, perfect amount. <laughs> um, you cannot. So you can't, there, there's some studies where they say you can't, I learned this recently. <clears throat> you can't have a, th a thought unless you know the words around it. Like, you know, some cultures and stuff don't have the... the like Eskimos, uh, the ones, Eskimos have 20 words for snow or whatever. Yes, exactly. Or some languages don't have the, the capacity to express uh, kuda, wuda, shuda. So they're very much in the, in the now. Mm. Um, I think that it all has to start with, with a feeling and if you and then you have to try and figure out what the words are to go with it like these feelings and these emotions live deep down in some place that we've never named we've never called them therefore there's no personality and no no separation that you can have between them to look at it and go what are you mm. globule of suffering you know it, they live so deep that we don't know that they exist because they're so intrinsically part of us they think they can't be changed and therefore they can't be blamed or else we'll never succeed and go forward and be the thing that we want to be. Mm. But to eradicate those and see them and dismantle them is how we flourish, not only in our own, you know, micro world, but the entire world. Like you're, you know, shit can't grow unless there's some good soil. You don't get flowers unless you fertilize them with some shit, with mm. some shit. You have to have that, you know, to get the flowers. And I, I think that those things have to be, um, there is great power in looking at the, at the truth of, truths of yourselves and say them out loud. When you can speak them, they then are something that you can deal with. That's what therapy is about. Right, right. Ans answer me this question and then have yourself go, oh, I can't believe I said that out loud. Your neuro-linguistic programming is there without you even having to create it. You go blah, 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 and you realize you've said six words that are horrific that you would never say to your mum or your seven-year-old self. And you go, I just said that out loud again. Yuck. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then so, you know, something you said, interestingly, is about the space. There needs to be space between things for us to realize they're there. Yes. So, so you know, because there's this, there is this um, question about how do we meet oppression? Um, and do we meet it with like the same patriarchal force and kind of fight it out? Or, and then where is the magic of the space? And, and how does that? Um, uh, this is so uh, tough. I had this conversation with, with my friend. It was the most recent episode of Extraordinaires. We were talking about that same thing. And if you had have asked me before that, you know, I would have said, you know, take a page out of MLK's book, Gandhi, you know, but it didn't work that I'm just going to offer you my heart and be a reflection of the goodness within you. Mm. Does it necessarily transmute a, a, an evil? Because it just means they win again. There's nothing that reflects and makes them go ill about themselves. Um, and so, you know, in, in some aspects, you know, she was justifying the, the power of the violence, you know, to fight violence with violence at least gets your attention, mm -hmm. right? At least says, fuck you. 
right. you know, but then it then isn't there the space, you know, if two bears or two, you know, carnivor carnivorous animals are going to fight, like one doesn't lay down you, you, your dinner, you know, you have to go, I am your match. Don't you fuck with me, you know, and then you figure out, you know, <laughs> whose territory it is mm. but we're trying to figure out that it's both of our territories so there's an equality that has to be met not only with our compassion but with our our ferocity to stand up for what we know is right so to stand up with ferocity for what you know is is, is right and true means that you you know oh, back of the hand i don't know but i, I i'm not gonna I, I don't want us to kill anybody anymore i don't want that to happen anymore I don't know. I'm speaking out my ass. I don't know what the answer is. Well, you know, but it, it's an interesting thing because, because obviously, you know, when I think about bullies and, um, and oppression, um, uh, I want to stand up and, 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 and fight that with all my force, all my fire, all my ferocity. Um, but then also I, I ask myself, what is feeding those systems to continue? That's Within yourself? Well, well, the question is, how much am I the universe upon which I look? Mm. And if, if, if I am that universe, which is a suggestion of all spiritual teachers um, and, and, you know, and practical experiences in, in the meditation, then what can be done inside the in, inner vehicle to um, suffocate the fire that is oppression and and is that as powerful more powerful uh it, 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 you know sitting down and meditating on world peace uh, right. or, or specifically on the on the reduction of oppression because of a racial identity mm. is is the power in that as much as going on the streets and um and, and smashing the windows to get attention I want to say uh, my initial response is that both are necessary in equal measure. The spectrum of, of us as individuals and the spectrum of us as a society, society needs to be supported in equal measure on both aspects, the very heavy and the dark and the very light and the pure. Mm. Wouldn't it make sense that we have to practice sharpening your spear and well as your purity right. you know it doesn't it doesn't that make sense that they are both necessary so then when the time comes for them to because it's like it's a double i think everything is a double-edged sword uh, something can't be fought just with one because one doesn't win but it's like you're this ninja of of all things that are universe, which is pure destruction, it is Kali incarnate, right. right? It is fire and brimstone and out for you, as well as what the actual F is that literal creation, like the spark of all life exists. I just think it's both. I don't think one, when you ask that question, I think it's, it's both in extreme both in access mm. within and without to me yeah that's not easy yeah that's not easy that's like the hardest thing i want to live a do. Right. <laughs> well, both come and go at the same time i mean this is this yeah. is the paradox it seems to be the magic so so being of in, in, in loving service what 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 do you find is the most effective um offering that that you can that you can be at this time So the most that I personally can be at this time um, is a communicator. Um, I, I feel like we've leveled up and as far as, you know, my husband's and my relationship goes, you know, as sovereign beings, um, we've leveled up in our access to authenticity of our own truth mm. and being able to speak that in the second like I find that is very powerful to have an awareness 
not just in your morning journal and that might be where it starts but for mm. me to the second that i feel an emotion bubble up that is the darkness that is the the bully that is the and even the lover even the gandhi even the whatever it is to to have a second space as you say to see it as if i have you know I, i've named there's six seven twenty different individual characters within each person that you could actually make a film about like inside out you know what i mean oh this is my this is this is my <laughs> this is my you know little i call her sheila she's outrageous right. sheila. <laughs> you know to, yeah <laughs> you know who she is <laughs> but to have that separation for when you say that and go where does that live that communication that you have within yourself to understand where all of the things come from and then to be able to outwardly share that like I'm just at the part of communication. I'm at the part of having opened myself up to a number of people and have that come back and say, you said that you would hear me. I, I need to speak, speak about this. Mm -hmm. So all my dreams come true of being, you know, a therapist, but not the education seem to have, all, have come true. And I'm thrilled. So just communication, I think for now. And then I'm doing a lot of, you know, I'm joining volunteer groups and trying to figure out how I, you know, join the, the education about you know equality especially in this country in australia too you know all all that so we're, we're, we're both part of a, a of a sacred couple community called eden yes um and you know you mentioned uh, um how you're coming together with your partner and and, and starting to uh, embody the authentic reflection is it kind of like an as above so below so like start with your immediate relationships and then, and then it will kind of cascade. Do you think there's a magic that cascades out? Yes, yes. And the relationships, when you say that, the very first relationship and the last relationship, the relationship that I think is the most important throughout is the relationship you have to yourself. Okay, okay. I mean, that, that is just wild to pe most people. They don't understand what that means, a relationship. Is it? What do you mean? I don't believe that. I know, but I, I believe, and that's my greatest passion in life, I think, I believe that once you're introduced to that concept, you don't know what you don't know. But once you do, it goes, oh, suddenly you have this opportunity to go, oh, and you can start to pull the pieces out and look at them like little prints, right. like your little birds attached to strings. And you go, oh, who is, what is that? Oh, God. So my how? Seven year old. So how do people begin to identify a relationship with themselves when, when that term is literally alien to them? And they're like, well, what do you mean a relationship with me? Mm. How do they begin to look at that? Interesting. I mean, my, my meditation is, has to begin. It sucks. It's really hard to start. But there's a world in there that, you know, mm. and I'm not saying it's the answer, but I'm saying it's a part of it. And you cannot go deeper without it. Time with yourself, time with your thoughts, time with your void, and to see the, you know, the the black hole <laughs> open up out the other side is it's a it's it's a mind altering uh -huh. thing to see. Um, and I, I I think then I don't I don't know if you if you don't believe in therapy that doesn't have to necessarily be the way to go, but a conversation has to start happening where journal sit down and walk walk through your life month by month from the first memory you have and as soon as you hit a roadblock about seven you'll hit something where you go ugh, ugh, his fault he did that I, I hate myself I, I, that's my fault whatever that is and you talk that shit out and you talk it out until it becomes that other person and give him a name what's her name what does she look like? What did she want to say? What did he want to say? What did he wish he'd done? What did he wish he'd known? And write about it. That's a good start. Start there. And then a flood, you know, and don't, don't roll over these things. Mm -hmm. It's an exercise. And if you don't know how to talk about it, an exercise can be really, you know, helpful way to start just to, you'll hit a roadblock pretty quick, but keep talking about it. Keep talking to yourself. Keep listening to your truth. And your pain and your lies and your suffering, there's nothing wrong. It's all in. It's just who you are. Nothing wrong with that. You know, it, it's interesting because there's so much going on in the world uh, with the internet, so much information, 
splued, splued at us. Splued. Uh, that, um, you know, it's, it's almost harder now to be still and to, to meditate and to, you know, and to not sit with, not, not insert distraction into your life. Um, because people are feeling like they need to carry on and, and need to keep pushing and pushing. What, what can we, how can we help people to say, you know what, there's value mm. in, in the inner space. Protect your first 90. Your first, your first 90, 90, 90 minutes. The first 90 minutes of your day mm. are for you. Mm. So the second that you wake up, do not, under any circumstances, pick up your phone. I don't even like to speak. No words, only thought uh -huh. for the first 90 minutes. If you pick up your phone, you're in someone else's schedule. Someone else saying, I need this done now. Like it's a disaster. You know what it is. Oh shit, I've got to reply immediately. But if you don't look at it, none of your business yet. Your business is to meet yourself. Uh -huh. And your brain is so lovely and splurgy and smushy in the morning. Like it's so pure and clean. Uh -huh. um, I, the, you know, make well, it a ritual. depends on the type of dreams you've had, but. Uh... <laughs> boom, boom. So true. Not many people outside England and Australia know what that means. Boom, That's boom. exactly right. Exactly right. I love that. Oh, Commonwealth. Um, you know, I, uh, I pick up my journal and I write. Just write two, three pages and I don't stop until the two, three pages are done. Even if it's. All work and no play makes Jack a dumb boy. All work and no play makes Jack a dumb boy. No, but you you just keep writing. Just keep writing whatever comes up. Doesn't have to make any sense. Doesn't have to use punctuation. You might even never have to read it again because you can't. It's such splurgy scrawl. Right. Um, and then I do some yoga, some stretching. I look at some birds, some trees, breathe in some life, and then I meditate. You know, do some sit ups if I want to. I know, add whatever it is. But the first ninety minutes. No food, no coffee, no, hi, darling, how are you? Not, oh, got to pay that bill. Not, oh, got to reply to that person. That just in and of itself is easy to do because you just, you, you do it. You brush your teeth three, two times a day or maybe more. Then you just give yourself the first 90 minutes. It's all right. You can, we can do that. But the benefits that arise from that are 20 fold. Hmm. First 90 minutes. I mean, it, 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 it sounds great. And, 60. And 60. It's getting less. It's getting less. Well, so, if you need to, you can build it up, but don't like set haggling. yourself an impossible goal. <laughs> but he won't haggle. Won't haggle? <laughs> oh, so good. Again, again. Uh, he's a very naughty boy. Cultural, he's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. <laughs> Jehovah. Uh, Cultural you can't do those anymore. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, so cultural appropriation, indeed. Absolutely. So you know, obviously, the there's the point here is is to give yourself sacred space continuously in the morning, right? Yeah. I mean, any time. But how hard is it later? Yeah. It's impossible. I can't drop in. I can't drop out. Mm. When you open your eyes, all you have to do is breathe. Put your feet on the floor. Take a seat somewhere. Look at a fucking leaf. That's transformative. Look at a fucking leaf. Again, look at a fucking leaf. <laughs> Gonna get a t-shirt made. Look, look at a fucking leaf. Fucking leaf is a great t-shirt. <laughs> Why don't you? <laughs> That'll be on the back. Why don't you? On the back. Um, or be in service. So, so, uh, and, and so this is the point that, that it seems like the being in service is, is being in service to yourself first. I mean, I hadn't thought about that until you um, asked of this, but that's exactly, exactly. I think my, my, my passion stand. Absolutely. Uh, if you can't find an answer outside or you can't, you know, make the world around you change, perhaps it's because the only answer that you need is to master you. Mm. And we have access to that. But again, even the, even the terms master, I mean, right. think about all of the implications of that. Uh -huh. now, but aren't we masters of ourselves already? Well, well this, is, this is supposed to be the point. We want to master ourselves, but then the term master in, in, in implies that there's someone subordinate to it. 
Oh, does it? Well, doesn't oh, it? I wouldn't the master have... and the slave. Oh, I see. I didn't see the term. If we Google the term, is yeah. that the only um, no, 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 because meaning of it? The, like a Qigong master or a, or a Kung Fu master. But, but they are masters because, you know, they're, what if, they're the leaders. What about the mastery of an artist? The yeah. mastery of a, of a paintbrush? Yeah. Well, that's because they're the best in their field, right? They're the top of their field. See, I don't see it that way. I don't see it that way. If I was to, like a calligrapher or something, as a master of the instrument, and I do see that, you're actually right. My brain and my being are two separates. We have a left and a right. We have sometimes more than that. But it is mastery of your connection to source over that which is human. So to take it in again, it's not a subordinate from outside over anyone else other than my, 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 my truth and my purity shall hold mastery over my ignorance, my suffering, my pain, my defense. Right, right. So it's, so it's a mastery of truth. And ah, yeah. So how, how does mastery look in a relationship? Oh, there's no such thing. <laughs> there's too many people. But again, I think it, you're really hitting on something that I, I don't know if I'd completely been able to say out that I'd never spoken to myself before, but I think my stand is, 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 is always that it, everything can be solved when filtered through an authentic inner lens mm, mm. that has been polished mm. and tended to. Right, right. And it seems like um, owning everything that's inside you Oh, yes. The step of that, right? Yes, even the pain. Right. right. How can you not to laugh at yourself and go, <laughs> I did that. I used to think that was cool. Hilarious. Right. But I mean, I mean, I think more uh, um, concerning for people might be how certain people have oppressed them. Um, you know, the cops did this to me. Uh, um, True. This person kicked me out of their restaurant or whatever. Like, like, how again? Do Again, owning the relationship to the pain of someone else oppressing you. Understood. Um, I understand that. Yeah, but if you break it down, they'll talk about that in Landmark a lot. You know what I mean? Not that I'm a, not that, you know, I've done a, a couple of things, but some of their language that they use is good. The action was what happened to you, but you chose to make it mean oppression. Right. The action happened to you. Yeah. But you filtered it through the lens that was made you that made you be worthy or available to be oppressed. If you know your worth and that that might have just been their ignorance and their insecurity mm -hmm. doing their job and not seeing it that you know it was anything personal, you're the one we are the ones who choose to be oppressed mm -hmm. and continue the feeling and the label that that is what is done to us. When in fact, that is what we are doing to ourselves because we labeled it. Right. Right. We, we, we empowered it with meaning. And continue to empower it with meaning. And continue to. Yeah. Yeah. So it, 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 it's, it's such a difficult one because, because there is, there are all these um, seeming distractions and solutions outside of ourselves, like, mm, oh, it would only so be better if this, and, and, and if I had money, or if, if, people, if the cops weren't racist bastards, or if, you know, if, all these different things. Whereas there seems to be, first off, what you're saying, mm -hmm. and, and what I'm agreeing with, is that inside the center of self, there seems to be a, a and in a, a process that we are continuing to feed. Again, it's like the wolf story. Which wolf do you feed type of thing? Yes. Um, and so what, what's people's first step to self-empowerment? Listening. 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 Curiosity, right? Mm. Yeah. 
questions not of anyone else. Why me? Why did this happen? Why? Yeah. But just listening to yourself. Look, it's it, there's there'll be a thousand other questions come and they will exist for you know all eternity possibly. But to think or to realize that what we do have unfettered access to is this body, right. this soul, this mind, this history, this circumstance, this truth. And if you can, don't use the word master then, but if you can involve, to evolve, involve first. Right. Take an exploration into involution so you can feel what's in your cells. Like, what do you think? Why do you think that? And take responsibility for everything that's ever happened. And this is going to suck, but everything that happened to you, consider that you did that. Right. In order for you to what? Learn a lesson that perhaps you didn't learn in a past life if you believe in that. To, you know, I mean, I know that all of the things that I ever fucked up now are coming into a ball. I go, uh, how could I have possibly seen that all of those thousands of things that I, I did or, or fell into or failed at now can come together? And if I can polish that ball and see that they were all necessary mm. elements to creating this emerging desire that I wish to create for and within myself. Mm, mm. I couldn't do that without have revealing and experiencing those things. It's fascinating to me. Every relationship, every job, everything that broke my heart. Now I go, thank you. Mm, mm. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's take responsibility for everything that happened to you mm. so that you can empower the self with the ability to respond. You're taking the responsibility yeah. as opposed to blaming some external force. Don't do that. It's just further pain. If you can blame your blame, if we're going to use those words, blame or see that your choice to have that be necessary for you to push it away and blame someone else, you can turn it back in and heal that pain mm. and find forgiveness in yourself, it's gone. And there is no then need for you to blame anyone else because you have just transmuted it within your, right? Can you feel it? Yeah. Right? It's in your spine. Yeah. You know, yoga, movement, tapping. Oh my God. Tapping. All, all the tools. Find the things that you can do to move pain and energy and have it come up. You cannot go over. You have to go through. You have to go through. It has to go through. You have to go through all of it again, or else you're just going to keep going through it again and again and again. Amazing. Oh, wow. Teresa, thank you so much for coming on. Um, uh, in... I didn't think I had anything to say. <laughs> no, you know, you're an Aussie girl. You've always got something to say. I know, sorry, you can tell me to shut up any time. I'll just no, buy no, you a beer. I'm, I'm really, all I've been thinking about the whole time is you in heels, walking backwards, uh, doing your, oh, I'm gonna do it. Doing your <laughs> snap thing. What did you I'll call do it? it? A whip, stock whip. Stock whip. Yep. Oh, wow. Fun, fun to make that crack happen. Yeah. Look, That's what I want to do in life, I think. Make that crack happen so I just go, boom. Right. Look at a fucking leaf. Yeah. Why don't you? Why don't you? Thank um, you for doing what you do. Um, thank, thank you for doing this every day and bringing on such you know, lovely conversations and committing yourself to, I mean, it's, it must be, it's a, it's an effort, a daily effort for you to do this. And I just want to say thanks for just having a, a container where things like this can happen. And you reach out to such interesting people who have such interesting points of view. And um, I just think that's a beautiful, a beautiful thing that you're doing. And I'm really grateful to you. Wellness wizard. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, for your wonderful, kind words. Okay, I'm just going to sum up the show. Thank you, Teresa, for coming on. Love, love to all. Yeah, I will speak to you soon. Okay. Thank you.
So good to have Teresa on the show. So much wisdom in the obvious. Um, seems that there's a magic inside our, our ability to, um, to own the emotions and the drama that we have, to, to own the, the things that, that are our discomfort, the things that we automatically want to reject, um, that we want to fight against. What if we were to own the pain? There is a magic inside the surrender to our own discomfort. We've all got pain. It doesn't matter you're black, white, yellow, purple, green. It doesn't fucking matter what race you are, what gender you are, what age you are, how much money you've got. We are all sacred, empowered beings, whether we call it the master of self or whether we call it involving. There is a magic inside ourselves and that can change the world outside. Because everything we think and feel and hold with us sends, sends a, a vibration out, sends an electromagnetic field, a force field. You want to talk physics and science, then it's a magnetic field. Uh, an electrical field and magnetic fields leave the brain as if the brain wasn't even there. Same with the heart. Leave the heart as if it wasn't even there. So these magnetic fields go on till the end of time. They go on into space. They go, they go. And so the point is, you know, when we're playing as kids and, and, you know, kids don't care what fucking race you are. It's only the parents who are stood there watching everyone who have all these judgments and stuff that are projecting onto the kids and the kids are kind of feeling it in somewhere in the subconscious. So the point is, our thoughts have an effect on the outside world. Our feelings have an effect on the outside world. And they also generate from within. And our empowerment happens from within Empowerment happens from within, and that is where we can get our empowerment, our mastery, is to, is to involve ourselves with curiosity and listening. Having that space sacred, having that moment in now and, and continuously each morning. Give yourself 10 minutes, give yourself 20 minutes, whatever you can give yourself to sit with yourself and be, that's the key. And um, look at a fucking leaf. Why don't you? Yeah, perfect. All right. So I've got a book, Book Evolve, bookevolve.com. Check it out. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, share. Here this side, please like, share. Uh, that is the way. Share the videos. Speak to you soon. Thank you so much.